Professor Awesome here, and Merry Christmas to you. Today, in honor of Christmas, I'm going to read to you a bit of a uh, Yuletide story from our Viking uh, brothers and sisters. Here, uh, from the saga of Hrolf Kraki, uh, translated by Jesse Bayok, I have a story about monsters and Yuletide. And the background to this story is our hero, Bodvard, has arrived uh, at the stronghold of uh, King Hrolf, and there he found a man by the name of Hote, who was uh, kind of weak and uh, a man, but Bodvar made him his special project. He protected him from other men uh, and is keeping him kind of with him with his sidekick. And Bodvar, everyone's afraid of Bodvar, but uh, Hot uh, 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 does not have a great deal of honor. Uh, so, as Yuletide drew near, gloom settled over the men. Bodvar asked Hot what caused their de dejection. Hot told him that a huge, monstrous beast had come there the past two winters. The creature has wings on its back, and it usually flies. For two autumns now it has come here, causing much damage. No weapon can bite into it, and the king's champions, even the greatest among them, do not return home. Bodvar said, The hall is not so well manned as I thought, if one animal alone could destroy the king's lands and his livestock. Hoot said, It is not an animal, rather it is the greatest of trolls. Then, Yule, then came Yule Eve, and the king said, It is my wish that tonight men remain calm, making no noise, and I forbid that any of the men put themselves in danger with the beast. The livestock will be left to their fate, because I do not want to lose any of my men. Everyone faithfully promised to do with the king uh, promised the king to do as he had asked. Bodvar stole away in the night and took Hot with him. Hot went only after being forced to do so, declaring that he was being steered straight toward death. Bodvar said, things will turn out for the better. They now left the hall behind them, with Bodvar carrying Hot because he was so frightened. They saw the creature, and immediately Hot started to scream as loudly as he could, crying that the beast would swallow him. Bodvar told the dog to be quiet and threw him down on the moor. There he lay, not a little scared, at the same time, not daring to go home. Bodvar now went against the beast. He was hampered by his sword, which, as he tried to draw it, it stuck fast in its scabbard. Determined, Bodvar urged the sword out until the scabbard squeaked. Then he scratched the scabbard, and the sword came out of the sheath. Immediately, he thrust it up under the beast's shoulder, striking so hard that the blade reached quickly into the heart. Then the beast fell dead to the ground. After this encounter, Bodvar went to the place where Hote was lying. He picked up Hote and carried him to where the beast lay dead. Hote was trembling violently. Bodvar said, Now you will drink the beast's blood. For a while, Hote was unwilling, though certainly he dared do nothing else. Bodvar made him drink two large mouthfuls, as well as eat some of the beast's heart. After that, Bodvar seized Hote, and they fought each other for a long time. <clears throat> Bodvar said, You have now become remarkably strong, and I expect from this day forward you will have no fear of King Hrolf's retainers. Hot replied, From now on, I will fear neither them nor you. Then, my Hot, my friend, said Bodvar, things have turned out well. Let us now go back to the beast and raising up in such a way that men will think the creature must be alive. They did just that, and afterward went home. These events, they kept these events themselves, and no one knew what they'd done. In the morning, the king asked what was known about the beast, whether he had visited them in the night. He was told that all the livestock were safe in their pens, unharmed. The king ordered men to inquire if there were any indications that the beast had visited them. The guards went out, but quickly returned. They told the king that the beast was coming toward them, furiously advancing in the stronghold. The king ordered his retainers to be valiant. Each was to do his best according to his courage, so they might overcome this monster. Obeying the king's command, the men prepared themselves. The king looked toward the beast, saying, finally, I see no movement in it, but which of you will now seize the opportunity to go against it? Bodvar said, That would likely satisfy the curiosity of the bravest man. Hote, my friend, throw off the slander men have laid on you, claiming you have neither spirit nor courage. Go and kill the beast. You can see that no one else is eager to do so. Right, said Hote, I will set myself to that task. The king said, I do not know where your courage has come from, Hote. Much has changed about you in a short time. Hote said, For this task, give me the sword Golden Hilt. 
the one that you're holding, and then I will kill, either kill the beast or find my own death. King Hral said, that sword is not to be carried except by a man who is both strong in body and noble in spirit. Hope replied, assume, sire, that I am made from such a mold. The king retorted, how can one tell? Perhaps more has changed about you than is evident. Few would think that you are the same person. Take the sword, for it will serve you well if my instincts about you turn out to be correct. Then Hope went boldly against the beast, thrusting at it as soon as he was within striking distance. The beast fell down dead. Bodvar said, See, sire, what he has now accomplished. The king answered, Certainly he's changed greatly, but Hode alone did not kill the beast, rather you did it. Bodvar said, That may be. The king said, I knew when you first came here that few would be of your equal, but it seems to me that your finest achievement is that you have made Hote into another champion. He's previously thought to be a man in whom there's little pa pa probability of much luck. I do not want him to be called Hote any longer. Instead, from now, he will be called Shalti. You will now be you will now be called after the sword golden hilt. And so that, my friends, is a Christmas story from uh, the Vikings in the Middle Ages. I hope you enjoyed it. Merry Christmas.